Is a good sign? Okay. Um, so uh, we wanted to have a follow-up financial meeting from the last, the last time was February 25th. If you can recall, the last time we sat together and had a, a financial breakdown of the vision of from, from February 25th to the end of the project, um, uh, was we showed the milestones, the, um, the different uh, quarters, and the goals that we're trying to make for this, the different quarters. And so we wanted to follow up kind of where we've been now that's been about three months since that last presentation and where we still need to go and just to make sure that everybody's on the same page. Um, I know this is an unpopular conversation to have, but I'm, I'm really thankful that you guys are here and I'm thankful for those who are watching and those who will watch in the recording of this so that we can all be on the same page and we have an abundance of transparency. Um, so I'm gonna give it to Karim who's gonna lead us through this. It, it'll be brief, it'll be kind of to the point and we won't put points, and if you guys have questions, we'll answer those questions, and we'll kind of go from there. Thank you. Thank you, Buena. Thank you all for uh, your time today. Um, again, privileged on behalf of the board to present to you the financial update that we have here today. So um, moving forward here, um, the, the graphs that I'll be sharing with you, various graphs relating to both different building expenses and general expenses. The graph that you see before you with the blue bars those represent the income that's come in that's specific to the general expenses. So these are just general donations that are independent of the building funds. And you can see for January and February, we had a softer start uh, of the year. And that's historically the trend. It's a little softer than most years, but primarily because we had a, a strong campaign that we ended the year with last year, um, which was a pretty strong campaign that resulted in a softer January, February. However, you can see that in March and April, they did pick up quite nicely and we're halfway in May and we are on a good trend as well. The red line that you see here represents the our expenses. So January, February, you can see we're, we're pretty, there was a pretty big gap between what our income was and what our expenses were, but we made up nicely for it in March and April and we're hoping to continue the same trend in May. Um, now, when you look at the general expenses that as we projected out towards the summer, the summer months tend to soften a bit. And so I wanted to point this out because we're really not in a point where we can expect or uh, where we can afford to soften up over the next few months. And so you could see that our general expenses are typically about 50000 a month. And so I put this in here to encourage us to not not soften or not to kind of lighten up or take our foot off the gas pedal um, for the coming few months in January because we're not really in a position where we can afford that. Moving forward is the year-to-date building Sorry, income. Can I, can I just so I just sure. want to, can you go back one slide, please? So just, just to highlight the point, that conversation right there has nothing to do with the church building project. So that is just to keep us healthy and to pay the bills and to... Um, serve. So we use the main account expenses to help people with their mortgages if they have to, car payments, things like that. So it has been happening um, more and more. And so that has nothing, this has nothing to do with the building project. And we want to make sure that this is, this is healthy uh, to make sure that we can continue offering services and, uh, and surviving. So Great. I, just wanted to, I wanted to highlight that point. Now we're going to transition to the building project. Thank you. So when you uh, now when you're looking at the year-to-date building income and the expenses that have come in, um, these are, again the, the income is is represented by the orange bars. And again, we had a soft January, not unsurprising and not un unexpected because of the strong campaign that we we had last year. February came in strong, and that was primarily a stem from a two hundred fifty thousand dollar loan that we received, one that we will have to pay back over time. And you could see here, when we gave the last presentation in February, March had actually a very nice collective gathering. We were able to collect a, a nice gathering, um, which was in the tune of about $75,000 in March. April softened a little bit. May picked up quite a bit as well, where we generated over $50,000. However, when you look at the March, the difference between the March and the May collections, 
there is one caveat that I would like to point out. As I mentioned earlier, in March, we had a nice collective gathering where many people donated, you know, in response to the need and the message that we provided. April softened up a bit. And when you look at May, the primary reason why May picked up was because of one, one donor in particular that really fueled that increase. And so when I look at collective trends, we're kind of trending a little further down. And we're not, again, in a period where, or a position where we were just starting the launch. And so we realize that the, the road is long. We, we do acknowledge that. But we also want to make sure that we're communicating that the message is also, or the, the need is also great. So collectively, we've come in at about, we've collected about 465,000 or 430,000, I, I believe. I'll, I'll go over those numbers in a bit. But I also want to say that the, funds that we've paid out for both consultation services, professional services, for um, permitting, um, they equate to about 268000 that we've paid out year to date from January till now. So again, this could not be done without your efforts and your, it, 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 we've been doing great so far and keeping the, uh, you know, the, the uh, keeping up with our expenses. This graph is just a summary graph of what I shared with you last time. Um, our bank loan that we've secured is in the tune of, of, of 6.38 million. We had already paid off 565 at that time. And the part that we're going to be focusing on is the outstanding 1.4 million that we need to cover for services, for the professional services permitting and such that are not part of the construction costs. Now, um, this was another sh uh, slide that I shared with you last year. And, and when we started the clock in 2022, we paid out about 1.24 million that we had already covered, um, you know, that we had raised and paid for. Additionally, the January through March expenses or the, the, uh, our obligations, that was paid for in full as well. Now we're in a transition where we're in the second quarter between April and June. And we have to come up with an additional 435000 some of which has already been paid and some of which has already been funded. The key thing that I'd also like to point out is, so for example, when you look at the audiovisual infrastructure for $100,000, though that was based on bids that we obtained in 2020. And so when we came back to revisit that, because of the cost of goods having gone up, there was actually an inflation associated variable as well that went up. And so the reality is, is, you know, the need is actually a little bit more than what we're presenting. But if we can just stick to this, I think we'd be doing great. And we'll rely on God's grace to absorb the rest of the difference as well. But you can see here that we are on track, thanks to God's grace and your efforts. Um, and we are making strides. So we have not, we have not slowed down from the project uh, to this point. I think come September, we would have cleared the hurdle from a danger standpoint of, of not being able to pay our contractors, not being able to pay um, our, our professional services and not be in a position where we may find ourselves in a, in a, you know, in a fine if, if we're not able to come up with the, with, with the funds. But um, yeah, suffice it to say that, you know, come, uh, come the end of third quarter, we'll be in a much better spot, assuming we can have achieved our milestones. So since our last meeting, um, I mentioned we raised about $415,000, of which $165,000 came in from donations. Now, when you think about it, we presented in February till now, and that serves about two and a half months. And so during that two and a half months, we raised $165,000. That is not negligible. That, that, that is a, a tremendous accomplishment. And, and again, it, on behalf of the board, on behalf of everybody, we, we really are, are grateful for your generosity. Um, in addition to the $165,000 that was raised, we have um, the two hundred fifty dollars that we've collected in loans. So overall accumulating $415,000 that has been raised year to date. When you look at the fundraising committee efforts, um, there were two initial dry, um, activities that took, uh, took place. The parents' night out, 
where in one night we generated eleven $1 hundred dollars and the Easter cookie drive that was not insubstantial as well that generated about twenty five hundred dollars and so while these efforts really help and support we do plan on carrying these moving forward to to uh, um, to facilitate uh, but when you compare the the need versus what these bring in uh, certainly these are just supplemental and they're they're very helpful and they're very effective in their supplemental efforts but we as a congregation also need to make sure that we're aware of the 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 large picture um, as it stands um, the second thing we've put in the back is a sign up for automatic donations you'll see in the back table since our last um, since our last uh, update we did pro this this poster card or flyer so that if if for example um, you know, it happens to be a memory issue or, you know, I, I'm just not consistent in tithing perhaps because uh, I forget from time to time. It, it, if a setup in automatic donations is um, is helpful, we've made that option readily available. And you can uh, QR that code uh, or scan that the QR code rather in the back at any time. Additionally, in response to last uh, the last meeting, uh, some people came up to me and said, "Well, why don't we have a a, a postcard that we can share with our with our with our colleagues and, and our coworkers?" And so, in response to that, this was a wonderful idea. We did develop an e postcard to share with your professional and so, uh, social communities. Any questions before I move forward? Any thoughts? Okay. All right. So this just summarizes what I've already explained in a different uh, format here. You see that the scale or this uh, thermometer that is placed, you'll see it in your email uh, from time to time and it gets period updated as we have made uh, gains over time. And you can see that um, as of 516, we've raised the 415,000 that I've mentioned. And by the end of June 20, uh, by the end of June of, of this year, we're going to need to raise another $623,000. So we have about $200,000 to raise. Now, when you look at the year-to-date building expense, similar to the, the other chart that I've created, we will need to collect somewhere in the tune of about seventy-five dollars to $100,000 a month moving forward in order to keep up with uh with her task and our goal and so again suggesting what i'm trying to do here is illustrate the picture make it very clear in terms of what our need is so moving forward kind of you know to be abundantly clear we do need to raise the two hundred eight thousand dollars by the end of june uh 30th and then need to raise an additional five hundred thousand by the end of 2023 there have been approved fundraising measures that have been approved by the fathers, and these are listed here. So from time to time, we will have seasonal or periodic um, sale of, 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 of foods or take-home meals. Um, and we do this very cognizant, not to making sure that we don't wear out those people that are able to, you know, provide and cook and, you know, provide for those services because our church demographic is such that it's not enriched with a population that can, you know, it's going to fall on just a few people, not on a large amount of people who can cook these things. So we're making sure to scale it and making sure that our uh, these efforts are are, um, are are in line with what the congregation's ability is. Um, in addition, um, anytime we can capture or, or have, anytime we can capture any sales, Rather than it going to the outside, if we can internalize those sales and benefit from it, then that's what we're looking to do. So, for example, if you know grad uh, grad bouquets or something to the effect um, that anything that can be purchased outside teacher appreciation that was one example that was uh, um, uh, you know another uh, fundraising effort that was taken. They can those profits can go towards the church rather than going elsewhere. Um, we do plan on having monthly night outs uh, or monthly uh, parents night out rather. Um, and the next one is scheduled for June 4th. And so when you look at these collectively that they can raise somewhere in the tune of about $1,100,000, $1,100 per, per event, that is very helpful in its implementation efforts. 
In addition to our winter festival, there is an approved uh, summer, uh, a mini summer festival as well. There's also a gala that's being discussed that's going to take place in February of, of 2024. And to contact, please, Rita, Michelle, or Sally, Hanna, um, in addition to others who are part of this committee, if you'd like to help. With regard to, I, I think this is a really important um, point here as uh, with, with this third bullet, with regard to be active with sharing the postcard with professional and, so, uh, and social communities. If you go back, this postcard, it highlights our mission statement of the church, which is really a compelling and it's a deep mission statement. And it's one that I personally am proud to share as I, I, if I can share it with colleagues and such or, 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 or friends in the community, it's one that is compelling and it does list our mission statement so that they know that they're not just contributing to an organization, but they understand what the cause of the organization is. And frankly, given the ask, given the fact that we're, we really need to come up with, with $100,000 a month for the next several months, it's a big lift to carry on our own. And so if we can extend our branches and help and, and share this card, make active efforts, identify people, you know, kind of be on the lookout of people you can share or are comfortable sharing this postcard with. Because I think if each one of us does that, we can effectively broaden our roots and help to gather substantial funds. So this is a postcard that you've seen in your email threads, but I would really encourage you to give it some thought in terms of how that can be leveraged. Uh, within our community. The other thing is consistent tithing. Um, and so tithing, we, we do need, we do ask that you, you tithe consistently and rely on God's grace and reward for that. We've previously discussed a promissory note where we've asked for a loan. And in that loan, it would be, you wouldn't get it with interest per se, but you would get the tax credit as if you are being paid um, that interest. And so that is something we can discuss with other board members if you have that interest in, in giving a church to the loan. The final point that I wanted to discuss is an anonymous pledge. And we've discussed this as a board. And this anonymous pledge is entirely, as the name implies, completely anonymous and entirely voluntary. And so what this anonymous pledge does is you would write on a card an, an anonymous card for that matter, what you think you can contribute in the next calendar year. And that, that does two things. It puts kind of a, a gauge in the sense of what you think you would be able to contribute. And so it quantifies that number. And secondly, for us as a board, it gives us an idea of how much we can expect to gather between now and the end of the year. So that if we're not able to gather the anticipated $100,000, the board can make plans accordingly and make contingency plans to see what we need to do and how big the gap is, if, if there is a gap. But let me ask you this. How many people, by show of hands, are comfortable with an anonymous pledge? Okay. Um, let's see, moving forward. And finally, I just wanted to touch on, on the concept of sacrificial giving. I wonder if, if you'd like to further this. Um, there, there are two quotes that I, I found to be helpful in this. And, and the first is from First Kings and the second is from Proverbs. Um, in First Kings, it says the widow of Zarephath was never in need, nor was the bin of flour used up, nor did the jar of oil run dry, and her and her household ate for many days. So, of course, this is the story of Elijah when he went to the widow and asked her to ma make him cakes and how she gave sacrificially. Her and her household ate for many days. So there was never a lack from sacrificial giving. Secondly, in, in Proverbs, it says, one gives freely, yet, and, uh, yet grows all the richer. Another withholds what he should give and only suffers want. 
Whoever brings blessing will be enriched, and one who waters will himself be watered. And so, again, another concept that there is there is something to be said for giving out of our grace and out of our, our, our abundance, and something else for giving out of, out of, out of our, you know, or out of our need. And so um, the concept of sacrificial giving, I just wanted to share this with you in light of our need, and may our God reward you. And thank you for your time. I want, anything. I want to open it up if anyone has any comments or questions or need of clarification. So uh, this one, yeah, businesses, friends. So the question was, uh, what is the vision of using a postcard like this? Uh, can we be more about that? So the idea here is if you would like to um, share, the have a conversation with your colleagues or, uh, you know, just getting it outside of the Coptic world even um, and having something tangible to like hand them if they want more information, they can scan here or they can uh, go to this website, you know, that kind of thing. So we wanted to give something tangible, whether this is, uh, it's been on the emails now since February, every Monday, every church website, it's like, it's a, I'm kind of constantly throwing it out to people. Um, but we wanted to give something tangible because it's like, hey, hey my church is crazy. Like, okay, you know, versus this building project and, you know, here is a flyer that can accompany that conversation. So that's more of the what it has been very clear. Yeah. Yes. That's the that's, that's the question uh, for the for the when we when we tithe or when we donate, we have two different categories that we think about. We have the account that runs the main church account, and we have the building account. And eventually, those those eventually those accounts are going to merge um, at some point. Where we're just going to have the account because we're going to be living in in that building, hopefully soon. And so, and then and then we might have a separate building account when it comes time for um, the second phase, right? To have that. So the reason why we have the two accounts is for clarity. Um, if somebody earmarks on a donation on the memo line, this is for the building, by like we have to honor that. It goes through the building, you know? So it's for tracking, it's for um, accounting purposes, it's to make sure that we are not um, misusing what the people's vision of the money was, right? So if somebody donates and they feel very strongly that their donation should go to the building, and here we are using it for the main account, we don't want to do that. So we establish this second account, the building account, to make it very clear. When things are paid out, it comes out from this account. If people donate to the building, it goes to this account. So we track that very specifically. And then we have the main account that runs the church. Uh, hello? Uh, yeah, don't, don't have, like, if you feel like the bill is more right now, there is no flexibility of transferring. Hello? Okay, so when the main account was healthier, we did have that conversation in the past, but right now it's not healthy, so we're not having that conversation. But um, we did establish with the board to have a threshold of a minimum amount that should be in there to cover us as an emergency fund, to cover us for a few months and things like that. We've gone through that emergency fund, and uh, so we need to get healthy again. But yes, the idea was if we've ever, like let's say X, was the threshold that we identified as keeping us healthy and emergency in the main account. Anytime that we exceeded X, we would put it to the building, right? And so we had that system going on for a while, but then it got to a point where we just had to manage the main account just, just because. Yes. That's a good question. Yeah, I don't know if I don't know if we're
going in the direction of selling advertisement space. Um, I, we did that in the festival. Right? We had those banners up for the festival, and that's kind of one avenue through that. But in terms of like the daily um, having like a wall of advertisements, I don't think is the direction that you're seeing going to. Um, does anyone want to? Um, yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I don't think that's the vision that Buna David or I or I'm sorry has for any one of his churches. So I don't think that we're selling advertising to this Just to clarify. Um, I want to make sure I understood this correctly. Because we're recording. We're recording. Okay. Yeah. So the 50K per month is just the total expense for the church. The 208 by the end of June is in addition to that 50K. Correct. Correct. Thank you for clarifying. Yes. To the Coptic community, like other churches? Or yeah, it's a touchy subject because. Um, Amos Repian recently said he has never experienced um, since post-COVID this expansion of the diocese. It has never been this big of an expansion in his in, since he's been here, right, in the LA diocese. And so there is a need across the diocese. Every church is, is I, I'm generalizing obviously, right, but there is a, 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 a feeling of a constant fundraiser throughout the churches everywhere. Right, in, in our diocese. And so it's a little bit of a touchy subject. Like if a church is fundraising their own needs, like for example, I'll just put it back on you. If, if, if um, here we are presenting to our congregation of our need, and then I think it would be confusing if I would put a fundraising flyer for like another one, like St. John, for example, or just, you know, what I'm trying to say, we have to kind of focus on what we're doing here. So, Although it'd be tempting to spread the word, I mean, we don't mind if you guys spread the word, <laughs> you know. But I think in terms of a church dynamic with an email and specifically um, a mailer to the congregation, I, I don't think we can do that right now. Um, so, but yeah, is the need clear? Are we okay? It's depressing. <laughs> Just email, sorry, and then Peter will. <laughs> One percent of the people. Actually so the comment it. was for but, those who are watching the recording yeah. that all the adults escaped and they're not here for the for the in person physical. Yeah, and like uh, the, the OG people are the ones that end up staying, <laughs> but it's okay. You know, Abuna Danielle passed away from Saint Eunice Church. He used to never allow any kind of like, you know, you're not allowed to raise any funds for anything. We're not going to help. We're not going to work hard on anything because if we do it, then it's like our efforts are what brought the money into the church. And I don't want it to be our efforts. I want it to be that it came directly from God. So what we're going to do is we're going to put the money boxes out and we're going to pray so hard that the Lord fills these money boxes. And sure enough, every, every single milestone. week, those every money boxes will fit even more than anything of like trying to think outside the box and how we're going to reach people. I think we all just really need to just so hard really well that said. the Lord just not just moves this church but moves us all to donate and to fill these money boxes and to bless us so that we can bless the church, right? I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. That's really well said. Peter, did you want to add? It was actually right in line with what Emil just said and my, and my thought process was you know, some people might be like, wow, well, you guys are building a big church, right? And I think that if we... Um, I'll tell you, I looked at the plans and they're not extravagant by, like, by any means. Just I think that we see the world we live in right now and everything's expensive. So um, I remember, you know, so we're building a modest church for eight and a half million dollars. Well, I remember we built a cathedral at St. John for like seven. So it's just, it's the cost of the times. And the other thing that I was thinking about right along with Nemo's point is this is an important topic that needs to be said. And one hour ago, this church was busting at the seams. So an hour ago, we all very much felt the need of the fact that, like, you know, we're all looking forward to having more space 
and you know even walking trying to walk through the you know the sides to get communion it's we're very very full and it's just a it's a reminder that we need the church but there's going to be some of us that are more vested to this church and we've done this financial meeting before and it seems like it's the same faces that stay and it's because the same faces that that care and that see a need and and honestly if i you know it kind of it's tough to say it but if we're in this church chances are it's going to be us right it's going to be us that are probably going to have to give a little bit sacrificially but i encourage us to go outside of that i i agree with what demo said and i remember through the whole thing where we're talking about fundraising and some of the board members were saying man that's that's a lot of money to raise and I remember I was saying, I, I really believe that God is pushing us towards this, and I don't think that he's going he, he's gonna to let us down here. And I do believe that God's going to show up and this church will get built. I, I can't exactly put my finger on how, but I do believe it will happen. And I think another thing that we're one of us is I think we're going to have to write some checks, uh, which it's okay because it's God's money anyways. Um, but the other part of it is, is, guys, there's another half of the church that's not here, and they're not here listening to this. But they are a part of this church. They're all of our friends. They're all, we all have fellowship with them. And just because they are not in this meeting does not mean that we can't pull them into the need. So this is something that we should be talking about with our friends. This is something we should be talking about with the other people who attend this church. It should be talked about when, when this church is jam-packed on a Sunday and you can't even make it inside the church and you're standing outside. And it's a good time to bring up the need, you know, to say this is why. Right, because I do believe that this church will get built, but it will get built with an all hands on deck effort. And it is a heavy message, but I think it's a heavy message because right now we might feel like it's on this group's shoulders, and it's a big number for this group. But I believe as if we can pull in all of those other people that we see every Sunday, and we include them in this, and it might not be in a financial presentation, but it could be in something where. We are just discussing the needs of the church and where we need to be. Um, I think there will be blessings on the other side for us, for the church, and even for the people who might not be giving right now. But because of a need as this, they start giving, and they will see God step up and, and, and bless them as well. So I will conclude. Oh, yes, sorry. It, it's, it's, <laughs> I don't want to throw anybody under the bus, but the, the, uh, we, we just we want to make sure that we separate these these conversations um, to have a dialogue. Number one, but number two, we want to keep the spirit of what we're doing in the liturgy a little bit more specific. So, but I, I appreciate the the suggestion. But um, I'm gonna leave it. Uh, we're gonna wrap it up and. I just wanted to leave this slide up again because the idea with these um, these check-ins is that we're we're going to have multiple conversations and we're going to check in often to make sure that everybody is aware of where we have been and where we're going. And so here is the entire need for now, <laughs> for now. And um, and again, probably in the middle, like right we're right here between April and June. We're kind of in that little that soft spot there. Probably between July and September, we're probably going to have another check-in, right? And then probably between October and December, we're probably going to have another check-in. And it's not our favorite conversation. I know it's not my favorite conversation to have about money and finances and stuff like that. But it needs to be said. We have a responsibility, and we have the responsibility to be very transparent with everybody. And so, you know, be prepared that we will have these check-ins periodically um, just to make sure that everybody's on the same page. Okay? Let's end up to break. Did you, any, did you have a question? Okay. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not to patience, deliver us from evil, and Christ should us highly. Thank you all for staying and being very present and engaged. I really appreciate it. <laughs>